day 505 of the Trump administration and special counsel Robert Mueller has filed new charges against the former Trump campaign chairman. It is even more clear tonight that Paul Manafort is in a world of trouble. Earlier today, Manafort was indicted on charges of obstruction of justice and conspiracy to obstruct justice for allegedly trying to tamper with witnesses in his case. As we've reported, Mueller's team is seeking to have Manafort's bail revised or taken away entirely over these allegations. Late tonight, Manafort responded to Mueller's bail filing, saying the accusations of attempted witness tampering are based, quote, on the thinnest of evidence. Manafort is due in court on June 15 to find out if he will immediately head to jail. The same obstruction charges were also brought today against Manafort's longtime Russian associate, Konstantin Kalimnik. Today's indictment said that around February and April of this year, quote, the defendants Paul Manafort and Konstantin Kalimnik knowingly and intentionally conspired to corruptly persuade another person with intent to influence, delay, and prevent the testimony of any person in an official proceeding. Josh Gerstein of Politico, who joins us in just a moment, reports today, quote, a source familiar with the case called the indictment brutal for Manafort. Paul's problem is he doesn't actually have anything to trade, the source added. Cooperating isn't an option because he really didn't collude with the Russians at the Trump campaign's request. Paul Manafort's team had no immediate comment on today's indictment, but earlier this week, a spokesperson said Manafort is innocent and nothing the, about the allegations changes his defense. Ken Vogel over at the New York Times reports that Manafort's associate, this Konstantin Kalimnik, quote, has studied as a linguist at the Military Institute of the Ministry of Defense in Moscow. He initially worked as a translator in Ukraine for Mr. Manafort, who speaks neither Russian nor Ukrainian, and became a progressively more integral member of Mr. Manafort's team, eventually running the Kiev office for Mr. Manafort's firm. Well, earlier today, former U.S. ambassador to Russia, Michael McFaul, spoke to Ari Melber about this Kalimnik's possible ties to Russian intelligence agencies. He was well known working with Manafort and he was working in Ukraine, but he's a Russian national working in Ukraine. And uh, the world of intelligence services just generally is murky. Uh, and, and to say that he worked for the GRU or the SVR, I don't know that for sure. Right. Uh, but from my general experience in the region, would he have relationships with those kinds of organizations? My answer to that would be probably yes. And we should note that, of course, Kalimnik has denied links to Russian spy agencies. Meanwhile, on his way to the G7 summit in Canada earlier today, President Trump spoke about a whole host of issues from porn stars to his upcoming summit with Kim Jong-un. He also discussed his pardons and the Russia investigation. Do you believe that you are above the law? No, 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 I'm not above the law. I never want anybody to be above the law. But the pardons are a very positive thing for a president. I think you see the way I'm using them. And yes, I do have an absolute right to pardon myself, but I'll never have to do it because I didn't do anything wrong. And everybody knows it. There's been no collusion. There's been no obstruction. It's all a made up fantasy. It's a witch hunt. I haven't even I haven't even thought about it. I haven't even thought I haven't thought about any of it. It certainly is far too early to be thinking about that. They haven't been convicted of anything. There's nothing to pardon. It's far too early to be. It is far too early to be thinking about it. As the president and Rudy Giuliani continue to paint the Russia investigation as a witch hunt and a hoax, Philip Bump of the Washington Post points out that today's news, quote, brings the investigation by Mueller to a total of 20 individuals and three businesses that have either been indicted or admitted guilt and a total of 75 charges filed by the year-old probe. One-third of the counts included in Mueller's indictments, 25 of them 
target Manafort. Let's bring in our leadoff panel for a Friday night. The aforementioned Josh Gerstein, senior White House reporter for Politico, Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff at both CIA and the Pentagon, and Jill Weinbanks here in New York with us, veteran attorney and former assistant Watergate special counsel. Welcome to you all. And Josh, I want to begin with you because you were present for part of this today, even at a point before which you knew what you were witnessing. Tell us what you saw. Well, I was down at the federal courthouse, and there was considerably more activity than usual involving the uh, Mueller team. We saw uh, Andrew Weissman, uh, the lead prosecutor on the Manafort case and one of Mueller's top deputies, uh, coming into the courthouse. There was comings and goings by another uh, Mueller prosecutor by the name of Kyle Freeney, as well as several FBI agents. Uh, and there were signals with them going back and forth uh, into the clerk's office that perhaps the grand jury uh, was preparing to return an indictment. And indeed, by the early afternoon, there was a notice posted outside one of the courtrooms uh, that just that had happened, that there had been a session where an indictment had been handed up, although it was not immediately clear who was being indicted or why. It certainly seemed like Manafort was a live possibility for what would be the second superseding indictment, the third indictment total in Washington, D.C., given the very serious tampering allegations that uh, Mueller leveled earlier in the week. And for some Civics 101, an indictment means 23 members of a grand jury have found reasonable cause that a crime might have been committed. And Jeremy Bash, the presence of this Russian in today's document, uh, the presence of this Russian perhaps in our society, how was today different? What just happened in this case? Well, it's the first time, Brian, that the Mueller special counsel team has really drawn a direct link between the Trump campaign's chairman, Paul Manafort, and an official with ties to the Russian government. There have been other Russians who have been indicted by the special counsel, but heretofore we do not have one that has specific ties to the Russian government. And this individual, Konstantin Kalimnik, is a Russian army-trained linguist. He was doing pro-Russian government propaganda in Ukraine for the, for the uh, Yanukovych regime. You'd have to believe it's an entire coincidence that he would be a private actor a Russian national living in Ukraine, living in Kiev, but actually having no ties to the Russian government, yet doing their bidding. So obviously nobody believes that, and people do believe that he has a Russian government nexus. So what is it alleged, Jeremy, that he was doing in our country, especially in and around our presidential election? Well, if there is a if there is an effort by Manafort and a Russian government official to advance pro-Russian propaganda, to advance the Russian government's uh, view of policy and to inject themselves into politics, that's precisely what they were doing during the 2016 campaign. And it shows an element of sophistication, an element of capability, and an element of expertise by Paul Manafort with this Russian government official in doing exactly that. And there's a possibility that's exactly what they were doing during the 2016 election. So, Joe Weinbanks, put another way, there's a chance that this Paul Manafort, American citizen, was working against the home team during a presidential campaign. A couple questions for you. How was the screw further turned on Manafort today? And what are your remaining questions about this case? I, I have very few remaining questions. It's just a question of how soon he's going to end up in jail, because these are serious charges and are very valid grounds for revoking his bail and putting him in jail. And remember, this is not the first time that he has violated his conditions of being free. He wrote an op-ed that he wasn't supposed to have written, and he stayed free after that. But this is the second time, and the indictment has some very specific uh, pieces of information, texts that were written and exchanged in a phone call that show that they were really trying to change the testimony of witnesses to hide the fact that they were colluding in America to influence policy of, toward Russia and the Ukraine. And these are these charges we're talking about are heavy federal time. Some of these are 20 years each. If he gets nicked by a portion of these, he dies in prison. 
well, he does just on the indictment even before today, he would have had a life sentence, basically, if you add up all of the charges currently pending against him. So if he's convicted just on the substantive charges without his having tampered with witnesses, which is one of the most serious things that judges and federal prosecutors are concerned about, is when people actually tamper with the justice system by trying to change the testimony of witnesses. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.